everybody. It's good to see you and welcome to you joining us through Facebook and YouTube. And for those of you that are wondering, yes, that is a giant ice cream cone. <laughs> but the kids that were at BBS know that it really isn't an ice cream cone, it's a... Well, it was meant to be the boat that Jesus fell asleep on. So. <laughs> they have a sense of humor. And over here, of course, we have a whale. A whale. A whale. Over here we have the burning bush. And over here we have the blue sea with the path being through it. Yeah. Well, we're going to hear a little bit more about that in Dutch. Uh, I think the kids have a special treat for all of us from CBS. But uh, before that, welcome to this summer series in which each Sunday we receive encouragement from the letters in Revelation. Today we receive encouragement from the letter to Pergamum for life in this world. And we start with encouragement that Jesus gave to his disciples about this. He takes them for a walk. He points out the beauty of the flowers. And how the birds have all the food that they need. He says, see how God provides beauty for the flowers and all the food that the birds need? How much more will he provide for you, you little ones dear to God? And so I suppose if you were walking in the Okanagan, you'd take us through the apple orchards and the cherry trees and say, look at the abundance around us. And he'd take us down by the lake and the beauty of the scenery. He might take us up into the alpine meadows in the Monashies or even just around here and say, look at the incredible beauty of the flowers. See the creativity of God. See the plan of God year after year. See God's faithfulness. So you see, Jesus points us to the goodness that we can see in this world to encourage our faith in God. But above all, Jesus points us to a goodness and a power beyond anything we could ever ask, imagine, dream, or, 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 or even now can fully fathom. He shows us the goodness and the love of God in His dying on the cross and rising from the dead to offer the promise of forgiveness and new life and invitation to live with God forever in His love, changed and perfected by His love. So we begin in the wonder of God that we know through Jesus. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I invite you to stand as we join together in singing our opening hymn.
taken and the wonder of God known and expressed in Psalm 100, hundreds of years before Jesus. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. No, the Lord, he is God. It is he, Jesus. We are in the We are in the And she shall come. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless him. For the Lord is good, His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. Well, let's invite the kids up. We'll see if they can continue to be so vocal as I invite them up. Come on up, kids! They will have a seat on this here. No, let's, let's do it over here so the people can see it there. There you go. Have a seat on the row there. Excellent. There you go. Everybody have a seat. Okay, so at VBS on Friday we had a real fun party time. Who got their face painted? Okay, quite a few of you. It looked like I think all of you did. Okay, let's go through. You did too. Excellent. So what did you get your face painted as? Did you get to ask? I want my face to be painted like... Polar bear! Polar bear! Pear. Chicken! <laughs> Chicken! <laughs> yeah. Butterfly! Creeper! I have no idea what that was. <laughs> it's something from Minecraft. <laughs> Who else? Who hasn't asked yet? Casey, did you get your face painted? What did you get on your face? Remember? Eli, how about you? Did you get a face painted? Bunny? Nice. Was that a minion? Not a bunny. A minion. I know what a minion is. Yeah. Maddie didn't. Claire? What did you get painted? A giraffe. A giraffe. Sweet. Well, you know what? In the letter to the church in Pergamum from a long time ago, Jesus has this really neat promise that he makes to the people. And he says, you know what? One day, I'm, you're going to get a white stone with a name on it known only to you. So just like you got to, you got to say, I'm going to be a Jaff or a creeper or a minion or a whatever. His promise is, you're going to have some kind of special relationship with him that he's going to have a name for you. You have a name for you that is just between the two of you. It's something really special and precious, and it's a way of him saying, I know you, and I'm with you always, and I want you always to know that. And we're having a great time with BBS hearing about God and all the good stuff that God has, and who has something to share? You like, what's that? Are we going to spell random letters on paper? I don't know, let's invite Donna up and see what we're going to do now. from, of course, uh, Joel's band, The Crew, from, their, from his album, big old album, Blessed Be, and so they're going to uh, sing that for you now, and if you just show the next slide, just show the next slide, <laughs> yeah, that's not, those, there's three sections to the song, it's just going to stay up there, you really don't need, the kids will lead you in the words, but I just thought, it, so they're just going to leave that the whole time. Uh, now, I'd love to invite you to stand and really get in on that, but then you wouldn't be able to see the kids. So where you're sitting, you need to be leaving your hands like this. It's probably going to be hard for you to twirl like that when you're sitting, but you can maybe twirl your hands a little bit. You do notice that so all those people said amen. You see that last amen is a really loud amen. So you need to shout it out. Okay, kids, I'll get there on the stage, and you're going to lead them in this song. Okay, Eli, uh, Eli, can you go up and help lead the song? Okay, can you go up and lead the song? 
And I tell you, I'd like to put Wyatt there front and center because he absolutely knows all the answers. Okay, come on up there, sweetie. Give your dad a walk with him at least. Okay. Can you guys move over, over that way? There we go. Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to But uh, my goodness, if any of those who were helpers during VS, this room exploded with their noise of the kids. This isn't the one where they really shout loudly, but <laughs> they love that one. Okay, go ahead. Unless you 
and become like little children. It's like, okay, okay, he's telling us something. I don't want to forget that. Um, so where are we at? Oh yes, we have this uh, prayer that we're going to do, fearing God's word, and then a promise, and then we're going to do our readings. It is a blessing to grow in seeing, appreciating, and receiving the wonder of God. I invite you to join me in praying for this. Our Father in heaven, thank you for revealing your goodness in creation, your covenant with Israel, and your Son, Jesus. How much have we missed of what you have shown us and done for us? Help us to grow in seeing, appreciating, and receiving your kindness and truth and love and power and forgiveness. And help us to grow in sharing it with others by the power of your Holy Spirit, who with you and your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we can count on God's faithful answer to this prayer. The words that John says in his letter to the seven churches that are in Asia, Asia are for us, are for you, here, today, in this world. Grace to you and peace from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Janet, to come forward with our readings. Ask, and 
and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him?
faccio di sì. So as we started out, we can certainly be encouraged in faith in God by the goodness that we see in this world. And Jesus gave the revelation to John the Apostle to encourage us to faith in the midst of the bad stuff that we see happen in this world. In the letter to Ephesus, living in a multicultural, multi-spiritual world where everything and anything goes and is accepted as good, we are encouraged to follow Jesus in truth and love freely. In a letter to Smyrna, under terrible persecution and reduced to poverty of various kinds because of it, we are encouraged to follow Jesus in grace and live richly. <coughs> and now in the letter to Pergamum, living in a world where bad things happen, we are encouraged to trust God and live following God's teachings. Be clear, the, these letters to the individual churches with their different situations are encouragement for all of us to live in faith in God in this world. Encouragement to live in this world as it really is. Not as we think it should be. Not as we want it to be. Not as we're told God made it in the beginning, because it isn't that. And not as Jesus promises it will be in a new world and a new creation. We are called and encouraged by these letters to these churches in Revelation to live in faith in God in this world as it really, really is. The letter to the church in Pergamum calls us to live in faith where good and godly followers of Jesus can be treated badly, even killed, as a member of their congregation, Antipas, have been. It is living where, as Jesus puts it, Satan has his throne, where Satan dwells. And make clear this, this is something one can try and find some specific aspect to Pergamum why that is, and no one can pin anything in particular down, and that, I believe, is because ultimately this earth is Satan's throne and where he reigns at this time. And so in his earthly ministry, Jesus called him the prince. Well, the NIV puts prince. Really, the uh, original language has the ruler of this world. When did this happen, you ask? Well, it happened in the beginning when mankind created in the image of God, put as rulers of this planet on the planet, instead gave their authority to rule over to the serpent by listening to him instead of God. That's where it began. Now we need to remember that Jesus is saying this as the one who can promise everlasting life and everlasting joy to those who live where Satan reigns. Because Jesus won the authority by trusting his Father's love dying on the cross for the sins of the world, rising from the dead to be able to offer forgiveness and everlasting life to all who believe in him. Luther often summarizes this, he defeated sin, death, and the devil. In essence, he defeated the authority. But we are waiting for that great and glorious day when he will ultimately bring an end to evil, bring an end to the ruling 
of the accuser an end to death. That'll be a great and glorious day. And Jesus says everything he says, speaking the truth to the people in Pergamum and to us, because he cares for them. He cares for us. He cares for you. He knows and understands what's really going on. He knows what you were really made for, which is not this world, but is for a world, which everything really is good. And you really are a reflection of the goodness of God. You really are the image of God. Living forever. In oneness with each other and with God. That's what you were made for. That's what we were made for. That's what human beings were made for. And Jesus has the authority and the power to bring this all about simply by believing in him. Now some in Pergamum, going through everything they were going through, were, they were faithful to this. But there were others in Pergamum that seem to have been doing something like, well, we believe the promise of a world to come, that everything's going to be good, but meanwhile, here in this world, the one who reigns is Satan. And if you want to get anything in this world, the only way you're going to get it is by doing things the way this world asks of it. So in their day and time, that meant going to the fertility cult temples and participating in all of that. He makes comparison to Israel in the old days. But in our day and time, it looks like this. It looks like saying, well, I, I get that I'm going to die and go to heaven, but meanwhile, I live in this world, and in this world, to get the stuff that you need in this world, that I want in this world, you've got to do what everybody else is doing. Which means, you know, you've got to cheat, you've got to lie, you've got to steal, you've got to all the rest of this stuff, because that's the only way you're going to get anywhere in this world, so that's what you've got to do. Jesus is speaking in his care and his love and his understanding and knowing what's really going on and what our real destiny is and how we get there and saying, you know you leaders of the church in Pergamum, if you're not going to correct these people that are doing this, if you aren't going to stand up to what they're doing and tell them that they're off base and that they are leading other people astray and they are a stumbling block to people coming to faith in God by what they're doing, giving the impression that you can just act like the world and everything's okay. If you aren't going to deal with them, leaders in the church and program, I'm going to come and deal with them. That's what he's saying. So what can we expect from the church in this world? That's part of what this series is about. Encouraging us to realize, what can I expect from the church in the world? If it's the real church, you can expect from the church in this world to call out things like conforming oneself to the world to get what the world offers. That's what the church, the true church in this world will do. At the same time, it will do so out of love. Out of judgment, out of concern. Not just concern for those that are doing that, but for concern for those that are getting led astray by those that are doing that. And so, in the Lutheran Church, we call pastors to do that. We make it clear in their call documents. We want you to tell us the truth, even if we don't want to hear it. <laughs> Consider the truth to have been spoken. That's all I can say. I hope you heard it spoken in love and not just as speaking to you. It's speaking to me too. Right? To understand. It's so tempting, isn't it? Everybody else is doing it. Why should I? It's tempting. But we have one that is with us that makes some incapable promises and encouragement to us to keep the faith. The part of it is to recognize that our lives here matter. In this world, we can be a witness to the world simply by seeking to be people that seek to follow the teachings of Christ. 
seeking to be people of honesty and integrity. And when we mess it up, to be honest about that. Confessing our sins, trusting God's forgiveness. Seeking to be people that that love those even who curse us, that do not return being treated spitefully by treating others spitefully, but by blessing and love and forgiving. And that Jesus promises we are a powerful witness when we do that. And above all, the recognizing it isn't on the basis of how well we do this that we are accepted and received as welcomed into heaven. In fact, sometimes the more we mess it up, the more we recognize how we're messing it up, the better off we're getting because we're recognizing, man, I really need God's grace. <laughs> and it's there. It's there for us. So Jesus to Pergamum is saying, don't let the bad stuff that happens in life affect your trust in God and following his teachings in this world. Don't seek to get worldly stuff by doing what everybody else does. But seek to trust God and be responsible in following what God teaches us to do. And Jesus says all this promising that he has the authority to promise to all who believe in him that we can look forward to a day when there will never again be any bad. That includes, they're not going to be any bad in me or in you because it's all going to be taken care of. They're not going to be any bad, no more. No death, no more. No weeping, no crying, no sadness. The only tears will be tears of crazy, wonderful joy. And Jesus says, I'm saying all this to you because I have the authority to promise that you will receive all this. Simply so trust me. Follow me. And receive me. My grace. Believe in my truth. He makes a couple of interesting promises at the end of this letter at the Pergamon, which, again, commentators have a really difficult time trying to pin down exactly any context to Pergamon on these ones. Right? So I have my own interpretation. You can take it and do with it as you like. He talks about the hidden manna and a white stone. And I immediately go back to the temptation of Jesus with the devil, because he's talking about Satan, where Satan reigns. And I remember the temptation to know, like, turn the stone into bread. And he says, no, no, man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And this letter to Pergamum is all about that. It's all about trust God's word. Trust God, trust his word, live by his word. And that's exactly what he did in that temptation. He didn't turn it into bread. He didn't turn it into man. He trusted that man lives not on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. And I think what he's promising is he's promising that there is a hidden manna when we trust God. There is a hidden daily bread. God has ways of providing for what our needs are that we can't see with our earthly eyes. It's not about doing nothing. It's about doing what we're responsible to do, but trusting God has a way of providing for us that we can't see. That's the hidden map, I would suggest to you, the hidden daily stuff. And then I love the white stone thing. It's like, remember, Jesus didn't miraculously turn that stone into what is needed. Then he kind of, here's the stone, and you get a new name in the stone. In other words, with this, with your living this way, you get a new relationship with God as you live in this kind of trust of seeking God first, as Jesus puts it. And seeking to put first what God desires, and what God wants, and putting that first in your life. He says, you get a new relationship with God. A special, intimate relationship with God where God has a name for you and you have a name for God that, that nobody shares. It's just 
a special relationship with them. We all want to be special. We all want a special relationship with God. And here, I believe he's promising it to those who seek to live in faith and trust in him. God knows you. Better than you know yourself. God loves you more than you're ever going to love yourself. God appreciates you more than you can ever appreciate yourself. God can give you a name that you'll go, yeah, yeah. And they'll say, you can call me. Anyways, that's what I think. Philippians 4.19, the Bible does promise this. God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so we sing, he is able.
Lord, we ask you to watch over this troubled world and all who are in positions of leadership, that they would lead by looking to you for guidance. Lord, please be with all missionaries here at home in Canada and abroad. We pray and thank you for those who are reaching out to be to the unreached. Open our hearts of those who would listen to your word as it is proclaimed to them. We ask you to hear our personal requests as we each silently speak to you now with those needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to be with all of us this week and help us to see where you need us to help others. How to be kind to each other and love and forgive others as you love and forgive us. All this we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Again, encouraged to trust in God in this world by seeing the good things in this world as signs of God's goodness and the Father's blessing and supply for us. In the letter of Pergamum, we are encouraged to faith in God by recognizing that in this world, bad stuff happens. It's not from God, but bad stuff happens in this world. And we are encouraged to recognize that Jesus has the authority to overcome the bad and promises one day we'll live in a world and we'll be no bad no more. And we close by recognizing that as we go into this world, we go encouraged by Jesus to recognize the incredible gift we have in prayer. You heard this in the Gospel reading. They ask, teach us like John teaches us to, God is the Sabbath to pray. He doesn't do that. He does something better. He says, no, 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 I'm going to teach you to pray like I pray. You see, I pray as the Son of God. I'm going to teach you to pray as children of God. Do you understand? That's what he's doing in that prayer. He doesn't answer the request to teach him to pray like John says. John taught his disciples. He says, no, no, no. I'm the son of God. Here's how I pray to God. And you're God's children. I say you're God's children. And so you pray as God's children. And praying as God's children, you need to recognize that he's, he's happy to hear from you. And even when he's not happy to hear from you, he's going to listen to you like the neighbor that's knocking on the door even when he does. And he's going to answer. So, if you got something on your mind, talk to him. Ask. And then he says, and by the way, you've got to be clear that, you know, I mean, you guys aren't exactly perfect, um, but you're never going to get something bad to those that you love when they ask. You might not give them exactly what they ask for, but you're not going to give them something bad. He says, how much more is your father going to give you good stuff when you talk to him? And then he says, above all, Ask him for the Holy Spirit. Do you understand why? Because Jesus, as the Son of God, prays in the oneness of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. So he says, you ask for the Holy Spirit, then you pray exactly as I pray. You pray in the oneness with the Father and the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's crazy stuff. That's the promise. It's not just about reciting the Lord's Prayer. It's wonderful and amazing. That's the best prayer that I know. I'm not putting down a prayer. But I'm saying Jesus is teaching something much deeper. And so go, encourage, talk to God as his child. You're his child. He's your father. He wants you to talk to him. If you're upset, be upset. Tell him. He knows anyways. <laughs> if you want something, ask him. He knows you want it. <coughs> but listen you listen the spirit of God works in you through the word of God that you've heard God answers prayer 
Jesus encouraged us that we can go into this world as bad as it might get, knowing that we are one with God. In a conversation on Monday, we'll recognize and have face to face and the glory of God. You know, Paul puts it this way in terms of this whole encouragement to us about our identity, who we are here in this world. He says, you're a letter from Christ. Christ has written a plural, a letter. You're the letter. And each one of us, we carry our own personal expression of God's letter to the world in our life by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are a letter from Christ, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. And now to Him, the Father, who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power of His Spirit at work within us, to Him be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And so in the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.